the text input component allows the user to enter text in the application. It is useful to get simple data from the user and display it in the app, whether it's to customize experience, evaluate knowledge, or unlock something like in a game. If you need to collect multiple fields, you should probably use a form. You can embed any form you want with the web component or use the Tripeto form component that is great for offline use. In this video, let's see how to add an input field, store this text inside or outside the app, display it, and trigger a conditional action based on this user input. Let's add a text field for the user to enter his or her first name. To add text input, click on components and choose text input. The design is quite standard, but you can customize text size, alignment and color, and write a placeholder text. Double click on the component to preview its content. Use the breadcrumb to exit. Input can be automatically validated by enabling live validation in the properties, or you can add a validation action from a button. In this case, select the button and add an action, interact with the component, text input, and validate. There are other actions available on this component, such as set text, focus text, or clear text. It has also an unvalidated event that is used to trigger an action when the input is validated. You can display this text wherever you want in the app, add a text block, and use data binding to connect to this component and display its value. By default, user input is only available on the device, but when the user closes the app, data is deleted. If you want to keep this data, you must also store it in a database. You can connect your app to multiple databases, choose the right one depending on your needs. The Pandasid database is great to store data on the user's local device. Data will remain private to the user, and it will still be available after the app closes. If there is a user authentication to your app, you can associate data to the user using the same Firestore database. Otherwise, you can store data on any external database using HTTP component and API call. Let's have an example. Imagine we only want to keep this first name stored on the user device even after the app closes. Let's create a variable in Pandasuite database that will store this value. The type must be text, so you can enter text inside. If you, if you would have multiple inputs to store, for example, a list, we would have chosen array instead of text. Now let's add an action to store the user input into this variable once it's validated. Select the text input component and the unvalidated event. Add an action interact with the database, then Pandasuite database, and modify the data. Choose the variable we just created and the set function. As a value, choose the value of the text input. Text input is now a variable. You can use it anywhere in your app and it will be stored locally on user device. If you use text input in a quiz or a game, you will need to trigger a conditional action based on what the user has written. Here, if the user enters the word pineapple, it will be the correct answer and the user will go to the next screen. Otherwise, a message will pop up. To create this conditional action, we must create condition. Let's add a condition component in which we will create the two condition and we will add the action related. In the properties, let's add the first expression that we needs to be met. 
Choose carefully the name of that condition. The name is... The answer is pineapple. The evaluation of that condition will be when the user click on the check button, so no need to activate automatic evaluation. Define the expression. The data is the value of the text input component, so choose from a component and the text input. Don't forget to select the text input value before validating. As a function, choose is equal to and add the value write down pineapple. Do the same with the other expression, the answer isn't pineapple. To make the opposite, you can simply reuse the previous expression as false. Now that those two expressions have been defined, let's associate the action. Click action and choose the first expression and the action go to screen number two. If the answer isn't pineable, select another action, interact with the component, and select the pop-up that was previously created wrong answer. Last step. Do you remember we haven't set the auto evaluation for each condition? We need to add this evaluate action when the user clicks on the check button. Select this button and add an action. Interact with the component, select the condition, and evaluate condition for each condition. I hope this video tutorial was useful for you. There are other video tutorials waiting for you in our YouTube channel, so don't hesitate to subscribe to get our latest news.